Give thanks to loved ones. I'm going to try to make this a quick video because you guys know I talk a lot. So I'll do my best. I pray that all is well with each of you and that you are walking in your highest destiny, your highest promise for yourself that you have authored and co-authored with the Most High. And I kind of wanted to talk about making sure you say what you need to say to those that you love. And it's an inspired ditty. So here it goes. Um, I was thinking, I was going to do another video. I'll get on that later because if I get on the tangent, then I get on the tangent. Y'all know how I do. But so often we're very quick to speak in anger and then slow to respond in love. Like it's like, well, no, I can't. No, I don't want to. No. And I would just say that if a relationship is going to come to an end, like a good friendship, a good marriage, a good partnership, uh, business, good classmate, and, you know, you feel like ties need to be severed or it looks like it might end up that way because of something that has happened or went on be between you, don't let pride and anger be the reason why you don't say, I apologize, or at least what you really meant to say. Because when we're upset, we can say so many things that we didn't even mean to say. You know, it becomes... Well, you said this to me, so I'm going to say something back to you to make you feel a certain kind of way and da 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 And it always amazes me how quick or how slow we are to speak the love tones in us. You know, it's like, well, I already messed it up now. I don't want to say anything else. And I feel like, you know, there's something about clearing the air and speaking what your heart says. And if you've had somebody that you've spent a good majority of time with or life with uh, exchanging energy and building on each other, you owe it to yourself to be clear about what happened, why it happened, and what you really want to say. Um, I always feel like, you know, I think sometimes we can get caught up, but what if the other person doesn't receive it or they don't want to talk to me or they're going to get an attitude or... I'm like, be clear. You, you're you saying it for a lot of different reasons. If that person decides not to respond to you pouring out your heart, at least you poured out your heart and you were as honest with them. But don't let valuable people walk out your life without letting them know what they truly mean to you and how much they truly mean to you. Because time is, is precious. And having good people, good relationships, good friends is, is, is so so special it's so special you know just recently I had a situation where someone said something really hurtful to me I'm about to tear up and I could have acted really ugly and all I ended up saying I, I think I did yell but my yell was like you know what I can't take any negativity right now I gotta go and that's how I handled it. I was like, I can't listen to your negativity right now. I don't even have the energy for that. But what I did do was I wrote the person. And I let the person know what hurt me, why it hurt, um, and, you know, that I wasn't angry at them for feeling the way that they felt because they have every right to feel however the hell they want to feel. You know, that's the main thing that I'm learning now is like people have an entitlement to what they think about a situation, how they feel. Tea and lemonade, anyone? People have a right to feel how they feel about stuff. And if I love them, then I need to allow them that right. But I can be clear on how I felt, how I responded. It's not another person's fault how we respond, as much as we like to think it is, because it's our own thought patterns that make us respond the way that we do. In different places, we respond to different things differently. Th things that I would have got upset with two years ago, I could care less about now. I'd be like, please, I don't care about that shit. Whatever. <sighs> but honestly and truthfully, we have to be good stewards over our relationships. And, you know, 
if you can, because not in every relationship will you get to say I'm sorry or I apologize. Not in every relationship will you get to say how you really feel. And this is another technique that I really encourage people to do. If you cannot speak directly to the person that you want to make amends to or you want to clear the air with, speak from your heart to their heart. Send the love. Send the words. Speak silently from your being to their being. I love you. I apologize. I never wanted or whatever your words are. I mean, I know for me in some cases in the past, I've been very guilty of having an ugly mouth with people that I love. I've come a long way, but I used to be horrible. If you hurt me, I would cut you with words. Oh my God. I would find ways to make it stick and stay for lifetimes. I mean, I was this tongue can be beautiful or it can be deadly. And so I would, I would, I would really cut people up and I would tell them, you know, Hey, I would tell them all the ways they sucked and why they sucked and what they need to do to not suck anymore. So I say all of that to say, I've learned that it's, if you can speak poison, speak the cure and don't, and don't let fear be the reason why you don't. Don't let how the person responds be the reason why you don't. Don't look for them to respond. Don't need them to say, okay, I forgive you. Let's go back to being how we were. You don't, you're not doing it for that. You're doing that more than anything. You're not trying to make, you're not moving from manipulation and guilt tactics. You're not moving to make the person move. You're moving because you genuinely care. You've invested something in that being, that a being has invested something in you, and you want to make sure that if those cords cut, that they cut through with you making peace and you sending them with love. And like I said, if you can't speak to the person, you know, a lot of us have loved ones that have passed on, that we have things that we want to say to, that we want to let them know that we're angry or we're afraid or we're tired, whatever the case may be, send that love, send it, send it, send it and make peace in your heart with the being. Um, as if you were speaking to them. Um, there are a lot of times when I'm dealing with people and there's, there's a uh, tension between us. I just send a lot of love and light. I do. And I, I send words and I speak and from my heart to theirs, you know, that I love you and I wish that things were different and I understand where you are and I'm not judging you. I release you in love. I understand if we can't go into the next chapter with each other. I understand if we need a break. I understand if this is time for us to take some time apart or whatever the case may be. But I make sure and I send love to myself. That's another thing. If you said something or you've done something and you feel like it was not the way to do it, Love yourself. Forgive yourself. Make peace with yourself. We all get into moments where we lose it. We all get into moments. And if we don't do it now, we've done it before. You know, don't let anybody make you think they haven't had a moment where they just straight, you know. Even if they didn't say anything. Because, you know, people are like, I didn't say nothing. Well, you thought it. You you reacted. You responded. You let your actions say what your mouth didn't. So be gentle with yourself, forgive yourself, make peace with yourself, you know, be aware of what happened, uh, use it as a learning tool and mechanism for self. Be honest with self. What, what made you need to combat that situation? What made you need to voice your opinion in that way? What made you need to be right? What made you need to be heard? You know, those are big things. We all want to be heard, but we've been taught that because really and truthfully, it doesn't matter. People are going to do what they want to do even when they hear you, you know? It's not as pressing as we make it. Well, I just, you're going to hear me. You're going to respect me. You're going to listen to me. Eh, listen, don't listen. When I exchange with you, I want to do it from a place that's so pure. And it's not always there for me, but this is my goal. I want to do it from a place so pure that... Your response, like even today, I was listening to my loved one speak and uh, he was having a moment and <laughs> I was like, you know, after I got through, even though I was giving great words of encouragement and positivity, Shea buddy, y'all, my lips are a little dry, I just got through walking outside. Even though I was giving great words of positivity and light and love, 
I realized I was like, you know what? I haven't been a good witness. Sometimes people just need to a witness. You know, that's what holding the space is. Holding the space isn't always back to holding the space, keeping watch. It's not always about what you need to say. It's just about sitting with the person, hearing the person, allowing them to release what's inside of them, giving them a safe place to be who they are without judgment. And I thought about it as I was leaving and I said, oops, I might not have been a good witness today. Because when you love somebody, you want to respond. If they're hurting, you don't want them to hurt. You want to stop it. And we've been taught in this society, I always say, don't hand a crying person tissues because it automatically sends a message that they need to clean that mess up and shut it down. And so sometimes when we're giving words of encouragement, when people are expressing themselves and releasing toxic thoughts and energy that needs to come out, all we're doing is give them a, 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 a napkin and saying, clean that mess up, cover that up, get rid of that, shut that down. Shh. And so I don't know how I did today. I will ask him, <laughs> but I would like to do better when he's in a space of clearing. Cause he was, he was in a place of emotional detox and emotional clearing. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, people just need you to hold the hair while they vomit. They don't need you to tell them how it's going to be better, how it can be better, how it can be greater. Don't need that. Just let them throw up. They just need to get it out. And once it gets out, they'll be okay. You know, could you imagine if somebody was throwing up and you're like, "Uh uh-uh, girl, swallow that back down. You ain't got to throw that up. It's okay. Hold that inside. And that's kind of what we do emotionally with the people we love. Oh, girl, don't say that. No. And, and, And as creators... And as people who understand the power of intent and words, I get it. But sometimes people just need to release. And then you can help them later refocus. But let people clear. You know, don't nobody shove boo-boo back up in the butt because it stinks. Some of it's going to stink. Let it out. Fart, burp. I just burp. Excuse me. I don't even say excuse me, but for you, excuse me. (laughs) Let people release. You know, it's important. It's important. Um, and last but not least, never underestimate what love can do in some of the brokest situations. Like I said, I often reference me and my mom as have having a very difficult relationship on different levels for a long time. And it's so beautiful. Now I love my mommy. I've always loved her, but now I like her. (laughs) I liked her a little bit, but sometimes she was really getting on my nerves. It was a trying relationship, but I love her now. And I feel so good to have her support and her wisdom and her guidance and her touch. And I'm so grateful that we were able to get to a space where we could forgive each other and allow each other to be who we are. And so never underestimate what love can do. It can look like the end of a relationship, a friendship, a business ship, a partnership, a ship, 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 ship. Love is amazing. And if you apply love, There is no wall, there is no wound, there is no anything that love cannot penetrate or heal. Just give it time. If you can't speak to the being, send it. If it's a loved one that has passed on, make peace with them. Send them love. You can tell them I was angry at you for not being around, and I wish you would have been a better this, and I wish you could have been a better that. But I'm grateful that you were the one who got me to this point, and I love you. And that's why I hurt when you weren't there. That's why I hurt when you didn't show up. It was because I loved you. If I didn't love you and I didn't like you, I wouldn't give a damn if you didn't show up but I loved you so much that your absence meant that much more to me um my tv just wanted to play Abraham right now can active vibrations ir- something reverse something but um I'm gonna pause it because I'll talk about something else right now and I'm getting ready to shut this down but that's why we hurt with the people that we love. And you notice most of our pain does not come from the stranger, even though we might empathize with somebody and feel bad for them. Most of our pain comes from the people we love. Why? Because I want you around. I like you. Why aren't you showing up? Why didn't you call? Nobody ever cares if the person they don't like don't call. 
It's always the one you love. Like, oh, damn it, where the hell were you? I missed you. Why didn't you stop by? Why didn't you call? So let that be a gauge and a barometer for how much you love the person. And then share that and express that and then understand that. And then realize that a lot of times you might be taking things personal that are not personal. That people are having their own experience. They're going through their own trauma, their own issues, their own cellular responses, their own etheric body uh, holes and tears and mess and stagnant energy, their own chakra blockages, their own will issues, their own recording of not good enough and inadequate and got to do more and never get close and don't trust. Uh, when people are doing what they're doing and it looks like they're doing it to you, uh, no, it's their own stuff, you know? Let love lead and proceed. Send if people must go, send them in love. Have loving thoughts about that person, even if they did some jacked up shit. Let the love rule over. You don't have to dwell on what they did bad. They already put that out in the atmosphere. Let them deal with that. Send them in love. Um, I remember my last ex boyfriend. Um, I had some thoughts, <laughs> just a few, and I could hear spirits say, "Do you know how powerful your thoughts are? Don't." Think negatively of him because if you do, that's going to send that energy to him. We don't realize the spells. You know, people always want to talk about spells. Negative thoughts about people that you love or like. Wanting people to struggle for the rest of their life because they messed over you. Wanting people to hurt because they did something bad to you. Those are spells. And uh, be careful with that. Life, death, in the tongue. Those who speak it, eat it, period. So... Let love proceed and lead. And allow people to be who they are. Don't take it personal. Everybody has, has their own life. Sometimes people are not going to show up for you. I've seen it so much in these last couple of months of needing people to be there. Maybe people don't show up. And when they do, it's because they want something usually. <laughs> so even when they're coming to help you, it's because they want something from you while they're helping you. It just is what it is most of the time. And that's okay. Oh, wow. The thing is going to keep cutting off. Okay, so with that being said, let love lead and proceed. Can active vibration instantly reverse directions? Mm. I trust you with your life, with your spirit, with your family and your friends. I trust you to be good stewards of every relationship you have, especially the one you have with yourself. I ask you to be patient with yourself, be kind with yourself, be loving with yourself. Do not get caught up on the shoulda, woulda, couldas, because shoulda, woulda, coulda ain't going to do nothing for you. Move forward with awareness, understanding. Look and understand why you responded how you did and begin to employ ways to respond differently. You're a powerful being. You're a beautiful being. You're a love-filled being. You're safe and you're beautiful. Allow spirit to move on your heart. Spirit of highest love. Drop the shell, drop the guards, drop the fear, and just be. I believe in you, and I know you can do it. With that being said, be high, heaven. I say hello to my friend, and he says, hi, heaven. I love that. At first, I thought he was saying that I was heaven, and so I was feeling myself because, you know, that's just me. But I got it. Like, after the fifth time, that when I say hello, he says, hi, heaven. Get it? Hi, heaven. Heaven is I. Hell is low. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm so spetty sometimes. I love you. I love you. I speak love into every fiber, poor cell, fiber optic. I don't know why I was thinking fiber optic. Every aspect of your being, cosmic being, entire being, whole being, vibrant being. And I just ask that you be patient with yourself. All of us, be patient with each other. Be patient with ourselves. Employ love. Employ forgiveness for self and others. Trust yourself to be able to speak words of love and kindness even better and greater than you have spoken words of damage and hurt. And with that being said, be good. I love you. See you soon. Heart Solutions 9. If you want to make an appointment for a consultation at gmail.com. That's H-E-A-R-T-S-O-U-L-U-T-I-O-N-S. Helping you get to the heart and soul or the matter. <laughs> Helping you get to the, the heart and soul of the matter. <laughs> so that you can create what you truly 
want to create now. I love you so much. Peace.